Hi guys, it's BB. Today we're going to be playing Black Closet. It's a detective mystery solving game where you have to uphold the reputation of your school. I have played this game once before, but I'm going to be starting the new game to show you. So let's get started. Welcome to your new office, Elsa, and congratulations! As student council president, everything here belongs to you. For now. Thanks! I'm afraid you may have little time to relax and enjoy it. The privileges of your position come with a great deal of responsibility. It is your duty to manage the student body and prevent scandals while maintaining their belief in your good nature. If you are too aggressive, then the karma of the student council will be damaged and your classmates will no longer obey you. If you let them get away with everything, then the reputation of the school will be damaged. There can't be that many scandals. Did you really have so little of an idea of what you were getting into? No nice words here, Elsa. This school is in peril. We have enemies who would like nothing more than to smash this ivory tower to rubble, and scandal is their greatest weapon. If St. Claudine's falls, every graduate, every board member, every tr good traditional family will be tarnished. The school board will do whatever they must to defend themselves. As student council president, you are their designated scapegoat. Your family background, you are not old power. You are a talented upstart, nothing more. If disaster looms, you are the perfect sacrifice for the greater good. They'll expel me to save themselves. You will take the blame for every failure this school has ever faced, unless you succeed. If you do your job and defend the school, there will be no need for sacrifice. Fail as president and you will be expelled. Unable to achieve a place in a decent university, your future will be ruined before it even begins. But keep things running smoothly, and your time at St. Claudine's will benefit your resume. Of course, you will have a, the rest of the student council to assist you. A commander never gets her own hands dirty. You will need to rely on the skills of your minions to handle your caseload and to find truth behind the rumours. Read your case files to determine targets and set out assignments for your minions to take actions where they will match their skills against the skills of the target. It's Let's look at an example. First click on Moira to select as a target. Moira is a new target so you haven't learned what her skills are yet. Her skills will be revealed when you take action against her. Let's question her. For this example, I will be playing the part of your minion. Click on my card and assign... and the question card and then assign action. Assigned actions are placed in your out tray. If you wish to cancel an assignment, you can click on its position in the out tray to clear the assignment. When you have made your assignments for the day, click done to begin the investigation. Moira says, um, is there something you needed? You may now harass Moira. Actions use different skills and you, you can see what skills will be compared by looking at the icons on the sides of the actions buttons. Try choosing the harass action to press Moira a little harder. Moira squeaks, I'm sorry, I'll get to class right away and scampers off. If the skill of the if the skill of the minions is you assign is not sufficient to conquer the target, you make it incomplete or misleading reports. I need to try again. Check your check your case log to review the clues you have gathered. Now for your final instructions, it is important that we are not disturbed. Assign some students to stand guard over this location. You can assign multiple minions to the same task. They will use the best available skill for each situation. In this case, Marley's intimidation will combine with Charity's observation. The students stand guard outside the office. Now let us speak clearly. You are the leader here, but you are helpless without the skills of your minions, and that creates a weakness. A weakness which someone intends to exploit. One of your minions is a traitor. 
How do you know that? Intercepted communications, internal documents which are not for students' eyes, not even yours. One of them is working against you and will intentionally fail her assignments whenever possible, in hopes of causing scandal and bringing down the school. You must determine which of your minions cannot be trusted, or she will destroy you. Spend time with them, socialise, do whatever you must. Manage your karma, defend the school's reputation, and identify the traitor, or else your career will come to a quick end. Good luck, Madame President. She leaves the office, your office. A symbol of your power and the expectations others have placed on you. Will you live up to those expectations, or surprise them all? When you reach the student council office, Vaughn is already waiting for you. Ah, there you are, Elsa. Everything is in order. One of the chairs had a rip in the cushion, so I had maintenance swap it out. All the filing slots are clean, and there's a fresh box of pushpins by the bulletin board. You didn't have to do all that. I intended to do, I intend to do, do my job well. Being vice president means more than just waiting for a chance to step into your shoes, Captain. Why are you calling me Captain? You... you don't remember. Captain rolls up the tongue more easily than Madame President, don't you think? There's a sound at the door. That must be the other officers. To tell Elsa that she has to... Oh, you're already here. And what are you going to tell our President? Well, I don't, I don't mean to be rude, Von, but all things considered, it's not... It's not right that your Vice President when my big sister is so much more qualified. I don't want the job. You didn't want president, that's fine. But you deserve... Ties, I'm not interested. You're a natural leader. And she has the personality of a secretary. Von was elected, end of story. Oh fine, be stuck in your dusty old ways. Youth will overcome, you'll see. The door opens again. Um, hello, is this the student council room? Yep. No oh, good, I found the right place. I'm Mallory, the hospitality officer. Oh right, new girl. Be respectful to this young lady. It's your first year on student council too. Yes, but I've been at the school since kindergarten and she just started as a freshman. Well, I think it's lovely to see some new faces. Ah, uh, thanks. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. I look forward to working for you all. Aren't we missing someone? What about Rowan? She's already here. Where did you come from? The hallway. I didn't see you. It pays to be observant. Now that your minions are assembled, it is time to open your case folders and see what this week has in store. The best spoke brooch belonging to Harper has vanished. Locate and return the brooch. Harper last remembers seeing it in either her room or the upper dorm. Also, both Harmony and Elijah, whatever, were admiring it recently. Okay, so we're going to question Allie. I'm just calling her Allie with Mallory because she has a good social skill. She's got good social skills. And we'll have Althea question Harmony, because she's also got social skills. We're going to search Harper's room with Rowan, because Rowan's the best at sneak and observation so far. Well, she's actually tied with Vaughn for observation, but she's got the best sneak. So she'll be less likely to be detected while searching her room. But since one has good observation, we're just going to search the upper dorm. And we'll just put ties in the supply closet. Ali says, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen it. So that was a success. We got another success. I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen it. Okay. You didn't find anything. Hmm. Oh, we find the brooch. She must have dropped it. We got 
some high heels. Tyus has requested a private meeting. Oh good, you're here. Make yourself comfortable. This won't take that long. I just thought I should point out that I'm not a servant. My birthday parties have been detailed in the society pages since I was 13. My calling cards were engraved and registered within a week of my birth. So fetching supplies, that's beneath me. I don't hear your sister complaining. I'm not here to talk about my sister, this is about me. I'm simply pointing out that you that you are wasting my talents and I don't under, and I don't stand by quietly. Your concerns are noted, I'll see what I can do. I'm so glad you're willing to be reasonable. Ta! Now that she's made her point, there is business at hand. Okay, I'm going to save my points for now, but I'm just going to, I'm going to send each girl to the supply closet and see what they come back with. A veiled threat. Rowan just came into my office carrying a large box. Delivery. What's in the box? She adjusts its position in her arms. One bag of organic gold Colombian coffee, one classic style French press, silver monogrammed, one tea set, gold trim. Did you read that off the packaging label? Yes. Would you like a cup of coffee? Students aren't allowed coffee, except you. Yes, but would you like one? I... I insist. Alright. The two of you quietly sample your new acquisition before the official counsellor activities. Okay. So... The reason why I'm sending them to the supply closet is... Sometimes I can come back with a lemon, which basically decreases their stats, while these will add to the stats. So these will add to intimidation, which is the red icon. And the, but the lemon decreases all of them. And usually when they come back with a lemon, that's who you know the traitor is. So Ty and... Rowan's already gone, so I'm just going to do Mallory next. Found an animal decoy. Got no new information. Now I'm going to send Vaughn. We got a magnifier. So... They don't always come back with a lemon, but usually, more often than not, they come back with a lemon. And we got a lemon from Althea. So, I'm gonna start chatting to Althea because I believe... I, uh, I, I suspect that she's probably the traitor. Well, hello there. Looking for me? come to invite you to tea. Why Elsa, is this the date? I suppose you could call it that. Now I'm intrigued. Very well. Lead the way. Althea follows you to the office, then, fo and then holds the door for you as you enter. So, here we are. Tea or coffee? Either is fine. No, wait. I'll have coffee. It's the President's private stock, isn't it? Don't know what that was. Milk. No sugar. You prepare the drinks and set the gold rim teacups. Cheese and crackers. Oh, that's a nice variety. Thank you. Althea picks up her cup and takes a sip. So, what did you want to see me about? What do you think of this school? Not much to think, really. It's the only school I've ever known. I've been here all my life, since lower school. So have you. You, me and my sister. You must have some opinion. Well, there's a steady supply of lovely young ladies, so I can't complain. Still, I'm looking forward to graduation. I think it's time we spread our wings. Althea takes a slow sip, holding the cup to her lips moment for moments afterwards to forestall conversation. You're a very pleasant hostess, but unless there's something specific that you need, I should get going. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. 
Althea's loyalty increases by five. Hmm. And next I'm just going to talk to Vaughn because she's she's my favorite. Elsa, hi, did you need something? I've come to invite you to tea. Oh, all right, thank you, that sounds lovely. Vaughn follows you to your office, looking back and forth as she enters. I wasn't sure if anyone else would be here. What would you like to drink? Really, I can take care of that. You should sit, I'll prepare the tea. You're my guest. And you're my captain. I'm your subordinate. It's my job to make your life run smoothly so that you can focus on business without having to worry about the details. Uh, today isn't about business. I thought, since we were here. My apologies. If this is an official business, then I defer to you as the hostess. Tea would be lovely. Thank you. You prepare the drinks and set out the gold room teacups. Now I know Von likes shortbread, so give her shortbread. Oh, I do like these. Thank you. Von sips from her cup and smiles at you. So here we are. It's nice to sit and it's nice to have a chance to sit and relax between crises, crises, whatever. But there's something on your mind, isn't there? Is everything all right? Me? What's this all about? Do I seem unhappy to you? You look lonely sometimes. Do I? Well, maybe I am. But I know where my duties lie. Vaughn rests her fingers on the edge of the table. This is a strange tea party, isn't it? I suppose we should talk about hats or hairdressing or politics. or frivolous. What's your favourite colour? Periwinkle blue. It's a pretty word. It's nice to say, and a pretty flower too. What about you? Grey. Mysterious or symbolic? She sets down her teacup. I really should go. I need to study. Thank you for your time and the tea. Thank you for coming. Vaughn's loyalty increases by five. St. Claudine's will be hosting a public e even song? On September 19th, Talia will be conducting the choir in the chapel. Make sure nothing goes wrong. Questionnaire with Mallory. I'm gonna have. I'm just gonna put Ty to guard it. Yeah, she can do it by herself. But I wanna do something that's gonna get rid of some of these. So, we'll just use that for now, because I want to send Althea back to the supply closet to see if she gives me another lemon. Too close to call. Talia says, don't worry, if anything goes wrong, now... Nan. <laughs> Nan can take my place. You may now question, harass, and stalk Nan. Captain, there's paperwork you need to fill out. I thought filling out forms was your job. I'd do it myself, but it asks for your personal information. Parents' addresses, birthday, all that. Don't you know all those about me? Of course I do. I haven't forgotten. It's just not proper. This is private data. I shouldn't be the one giving it away. If you finish it quickly, I can have it delivered and returned in time for today's assignments. So I'll see you then. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly send Althea to the supply clo closet. She gives me another lemon. She's probably our mole. But I will question none. But I'm just gonna stalk I'm just going to stalk Talia just to be safe. And these two can stand guard. Mm. 
No, she's giving me candy this time. Nan says, I'm sure Talia will do a great job. It's too close to call, though. Talia doesn't seem to notice you following her around, but you don't notice anything new. You stand around, but don't see anything. You thought you'd heard footsteps once, but they snuck away unseen. So, I'm just gonna take the candy, but question... Actually, I'm just gonna have Vaughn and Mallory. Yeah, I'll take the candy. But, oh no. Just because Mallory is about halfway on her stress level and I don't want her to get too stressed, so Vaughn and Althea can go and question her. But I'll just have Rowan stake out at the chapel. And I'm just going to put Mallory in the supply closet. Oh, I can't do that just yet. Okay. Nan says, I'm sure Tali would do a great job. You watch quietly, but nothing interesting happens, but that was a failure. Hmm. Maybe Rowan. Oops. I'm gonna have Rowan go to the supply closet. I have a sneaking suspicion. And you two can guard the chapel. I don't think anything's gonna go wrong. The results were ambiguous. And she gave me a lemon this time. So we'll have a we'll have a chat with Rowan. You stand around and wait, but you don't see anything. I'm gonna I'm gonna stalk Nan. Because I just wanna I just wanna send Rowan to the closet again. That's probably gonna max out her stress level. I'll do that tomorrow then. Don't see anything new. So I don't think those girls are going to do anything bad, but I'm going to talk with Rowan, get my friendship up. Yes? Come to invite you to tea. All right. Rowan follows you to the student council office. You must. She must be waiting for you to speak, but she's not saying anything. What would you like to drink? What is fine? You prepare the drinks and set the gold room teacups. Oh, I've got a hiccup. Cucumber sandwiches. Thank you. Rowan arranges the food neatly on her saucer, but makes no move to eat it. Silence. Um. How's your school year going? It's fine. What's your favourite class? Uh, history? You must be good at memorising dates and names. I suppose I am. There's more to it than that, but memorising helps. You notice that Rowan's snack has disappeared, although you can't remember her see seeing her take a bite. 
Mm, do you enjoy being on the student council? Do you? It's a responsibility. Yes. Moments pass and it becomes clear Rowan isn't going to say anything else. Uh, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Rowan's loyalty increases by five. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And I'm gonna go back and talk to Vaughn because I can't help myself. You go to Vaughn's room and knock on the door. Wanna go to the planetarium? I'd love to, thanks. You head to the Science Museum, where you bypass the super high definition movie displays to walk into the largely empty planetarium. The seats are large and comfortable, and it's not all that difficult to find two of them together. You lean back and wait, eventually a program unfolds, fly through projection of the first solar system, and then the entire galaxy. While listening to the narrator's soothing tones, you hear a strange little sound coming from nearby. Vaughn, was she about to say something? You're sure you heard her breath catch. You wait, but her attention seems totally focused on the stars overhead. Outside after the show, Vaughn seems subdued. She walks beside you, offering no words. What are you thinking about? Her shoulders twitch, a tiny huff of air escape in her nose as she smiles. I suppose the stars make me a bit melancholy. They're beautiful, but they're so far away. Even when they're projected on the wall close at hand, they'll never be in reach. Well, maybe never is too strong a word. Strike boldly into the future, to explore new worlds and new horizons. Or am I only dreaming? Someday people will travel the stars. Someday. I suppose we ought to get back. Thank you for coming here with me today. I... She pauses, blinking, takes a breath, but says nothing, and then lets it out again. Elsa? Do you think everything happens for... Everything happens for a reason? Life is part of a bigger pattern. And sometimes things that look like failure or a mistake can lead to... Nothing. But don't mind me, please. Too much time in the dark with my mind wandering. We'd better get going before I start telling you how we're all made of star stuff. Vaughn's loyalty increases by five. Elsha and Marybeth have been s circulating dark rumours about Lindsay, that she's secretly a witch plotting to curse or otherwise harm her classmates. Is she the victim of a whisper campaign or a danger to the school? Well, I don't think these two are going to do anything, but I'm just going to send Rowan to the supply closet. Let me just do all this. Mm, she gave us sunglasses. Well, I have no idea who the who the spy is then. I'll just say, uh, it's Lindsay. I heard she keeps a voodoo doll of pin, full of pins in her room. You may now search Lindsay's room. Lindsay says, I'm different from other girls. Some people feel what they can't understand. Marybeth says, Lindsay, I heard she keeps a voodoo doll full of pins in her room. The public even so Evan song? I can't I don't know what that word is. It was a success. The school gains five reputation. Oh yeah. Who? Oh god. I have no idea who the spy is. Because these two have given me a lemon, but I've had lemons before from people who aren't. Who aren't them all? I'm tossing up between Althea and Rowan. But. 
they gonna search? Oh, okay. We're gonna get caught. We're gonna get caught in Lindsay's room. That's wonderful. That's okay though. Oh, wait, maybe... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a gamble and just put her sneak up for a bit. I'm just gonna have... Yeah, Mallory can just sneak on Lindsay for a bit. I'm just gonna add it by five. Lindsay doesn't seem to notice you following her around. You see her stop to meditate in the rose garden. You may now search the rose garden. Okay, but uh, first I'm... I'm just gonna take a gamble and search Lindsay's room. Wait, I don't need one. Because I've already got the... Because they've got the same observation. But I'm gonna have her... Oh! So I need some sneak for that. Because I'm not allowed to be in the rose garden. Okay, I'll wait for that. Give me some supplies. Oh, I can't. I keep, I keep thinking I have a free slot when I don't. Too close to call. Court ransacking Lindsay's room. The council loses five karma. You find a voodoo doll full of push, full of pins, in plain sight. This is suspicious. You may now detain, suspend, and expel Lindsay. I'm going to just. Yeah, I get the same result. So I'm just going to harass Lindsay, cause. I think I think even her detention right now will be a bit too far, and something's telling me Rowan Rowan's a mole. So, back to the closet. Oh, we lose five karma, and she gave me another lemon. Okay, she has to be the mole. <laughs> we can have a lemonade stand. Miss Talmadge has arrived at my office for a meeting. Good afternoon, Elsa. I hope your regular investigations are progressing well. However, that's not why I'm here. Now that you've had some time to mingle with the girls and watch their behaviour, do you have any leads on who the traitor might be? It's too soon to be certain, of course, but perhaps you, you might have identified the prime suspect. Rowan. Why do you suspect her? Just a hunch. You had better hope your hunches are accurate. Whatever the case, time is not on your side, and the traitor must be exposed and expelled before the Harvest Festival. That means on October 24th, you must be prepared to deliver a final verdict. You cannot investigate each student equally. Focus your attention on those who seem most suspicious, build their loyalty, learn their secrets. The school board is counting on you to make the right decision. I'll leave you to your work. Okay, I'm just gonna go and put Vaughn have the lemonade stand so we can gain some karma after we lost it for harassing Lindsay. But oh yeah. I'm gonna gamble and just have her go there, but I will... Jeez. This is kicking my butt. I really need to put their skills up. So, you can go and train. You give away fresh lemonade to the students of St. Claudine's. Counts against three karma. Lindsay sulks through the tension. It seems you're not getting through to her. Well, we let's lost some karma. You can have the rest of the skills. I'm really bad at this game. 
So Rowan definitely has to be the mole. You go to Rowan's room and knock on the door. Would you like to go to a movie? Uh, a movie? I... You wonder if she's going to refuse, but then suddenly... Okay. The cinema front is decorated with posters for various films and a marquee of showtimes. You pick a film, I'll get the snacks. Okay. She turns immediately to look at the list of titles without giving any instructions for what snacks she might like. After you return with your food, she hands you a ticket and you proceed to enter the theatre together. You settle in to watch a movie about a charming but impoverished gentleman who works his way through the through European society by seducing strings of ever more powerful wives and widows. While not exactly explicit, the romance scenes are frequent and prolonged, leaving little doubt to his prowess in the bedroom department. Well, Along the way, he falls in love with a young woman of good family who, who as an unmarried virgin, is constantly chaperoned and out of his reach. At last, he assembles enough money to make an offer of marriage, only to discover, to his dismay, that she was his secret half sis. Ew. From the days when his father was just a sedu as, just such a seducer as he. When the credits begin to roll, Rowan touches your hand, indicating you should wait for the crowds to clear out before leaving. Outside, she offers you a hesitant smile. That was nice. Yes. Right. Ugh. She nods, as if nothing else needs to be said. Can we go now? The outing ended, you return to school. Rowan's loyalty increases by five. Yeah, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk back to Bon. Hey Bon. Ely You go to Bon's room and knock on the door. Wanna go to our movie? Of course, I mean I'm not too busy. I'd be happy to accompany you. The cinema front is decorated with posters for various films and a marquee of showtimes. You pick a film, I'll get the snacks. Undersco understood, Captain. Oh, and if you please, plain popcorn, not buttered. Butter your popcorn. She waves you off as she looks over the list of films. After you return with your snacks, she hands you a ticket and you proceed to enter the cinema. You settle in to watch an animated adventure about a fantasy world where dragons take where, dra where tame dragons are used for commercial air travel, carrying pods of passengers strapped to their bellies. A young girl wants to become a dragon pilot. Her parents disapprove. She accidentally releases a dragonling from the training pens and mayhem ensues. Ensues. In the end, she becomes an unlikely hero and receives a kiss from a handsome prince in thanks. After a pause to visit the restroom, one follows you outside. I thought that was quite cute, actually. What about you? Underdog rises to power? I approve. Not quite a classic hero's journey, but the principle remains. There's always room in the world for more heroes. We had better get going now. Vaughn's loyalty increases by five.